Hey guys, Chris the Lazy Geek here and today I'm really excited because there is a no new way to do lazy processing of images while getting good results. So uh, one of the Nina developers, Dark Arkand, is currently developing a suite of easy processing including methods that he uh, developed like uh, his way of doing deconvolution or his way of doing a soft stretch of the image to go from a linear stage to a non-linear stage. Uh, this is for PixInsight, by the way, just to be clear. Um, and uh, he also integrated scripts to uh, use other people's methods like John Riesta's uh, linear stage noise reduction methodology. If all that I'm saying makes no sense to you, don't worry, um, you don't need to understand any of that, just like the easy processing suite that Dark is developing uh, will almost do the work for you. Uh, it's not fully automated, uh, you can get take action at each step that it does, but it is like it can really work in a very like push here dummy kind of way and it's awesome and so let's have a look at it so now it is under heavy development it is in basically beta status uh dark is doing enhancements like all the time um so you know it could break it could have bugs it could you know insult your mother uh so you know use at your own risk. But to use it, you'll want to go into PixInsights, go into resources, updates, and then manage repositories. You'll want to add a repository and you'll paste the link that I'll put in the description down below, which is to Dark's repository. Uh, once you validate, uh, PixInsight will ask you whether you are sure and whether Dark wants to achieve world domination by installing viruses into PixInsight installations. The probability seems low, so you can say, yes, I want to add this insecure repository. Once you're done, you're pressing OK, you go back to resources, updates, and then check for updates. And for me, it's already installed, so there's probably no updates and it will tell me no updates, but for you, it will tell you there's easy uh, sweet updates. You will press OK. You will then close PixInsight. PixInsight will give you a window asking you whether you want to install the updates and restart PixInsight. You will say yes and then PixInsight will get restarted. So now we are in PixInsight. We have the suite installed. I'm going to open an image that I took last year using my Edge HD uh, 800. And you can see that I had problems with framing. There were two things going on. Nina at the time had a problem of recentering after the flip. And also my uh, Vixen mouse, the Starbuck 10 uh, ASCOM driver was rounding down um, declination and RA coordinates when uh, syncing those coordinates. It's a horrible bug. Uh, they've sent me a driver that fixes that. They have not published that driver publicly. I have no idea why. Uh, but anyway, if you're having framing issues with an, a Vixen mount, you'll know why. Ask me and I'll give you the driver. Um, cool. So uh, let's go and do some dynamic crop in there. We're just not going to be very, uh, very aggressive. I'm just going to do this, validate that. We now have the Pelican Nebula in H alpha. And um, here we are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, uh, you know, here it's H alpha. So I don't need dyna dynamic background extraction. I think like there's no real point of reference for background kind of gradient in here. So I'm not going to, going to do any background extraction. I'm going to go directly in Dark's uh, script. And you can see under script, easy processing suite, we have decon, denoise and resta masks, soft stretch and star reduction. And they're in alphabetical order. It also happens to be the order that you want to run those by, I think. Um, and uh, if that's not the case, I'll issue a comment or something. But basically, I'll start with easy decon. And so easy decon, we can see this window popping up. And it reminds me of a prerequisite for this uh, suite. You want to have Starnet++ PixInsight plugin installed and working. If you're not sure what Starnet++ is, what it does and how to install it, I have a video on that. So please go and check that video for more details. Uh, cool. So 
we are going to select our view. We want to work on master H alpha. Immediately we get a preview of this uh, master H alpha on the right, which is here. It is beautiful. And uh, you can create a new raw star mask or create a new processed star mask. So for me, if I click on uh, create a new process star mask, I notice that it would be a bit too aggressive. So I will, I will create a new raw star mask and this will use Starnet++, which on this computer is GPU accelerated. Again, if you check the video that I linked to earlier, you'll see how to get it accelerated with your NVIDIA graphics card if you have one. And uh, once it is done, it should take around 30 seconds, we'll be able to actually use this uh, easy deconvolution tool. The effects of that deconvolution tool are um, quite uh, subtle, but very, very useful. Okay, so we have a number of stars that are available. I'm gonna do an STF stretch. Uh, this looks good. There's some noise that I can see around here that has been picked up. So I am going to convolute a little bit to make it a bit less obvious. We're gonna boost that a couple of times. I can see what appears to be some kind of uh, maybe stacking uh, artifacts in there. I'm just gonna ignore those for now. And we're gonna say that this is fine. So we have a star mask. This is what we want to get. And you can see how I looked at the stars. I saw there was a bit of noise taken up. I used convolution to basically make those this noise kind of disappear. Uh, then instead of doing another stretch, which would probably like enhance a bit everything too much, I just boost used boost a couple of times. And now I get proper star mask that looks pretty nice. And I think that's gonna work well for me. So I can go into the deconvolution parameters and uh, we could generate a P PSF from there, we could change parameters, but I have no idea what any of the, this does. So we're just gonna click create missing and run decon. So what is very nice with this script, by the way, is that if you don't want everything to, to be automated, you can have the script create processes and also masks as necessary. And, um, and then you can apply those processes manually, changing the parameters for each of the processes yourself. That can be very useful. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna like blindly uh, jump into it and then create missing and run the convolution. And we're gonna wait until it is done. And it is done. Here is uh, the result. So it is actually quite subtle as a result but it is uh, quite visible. So if I look at this uh, now and I go back a few steps right after the crop, uh, we'll see, especially if I zoom in, that some of the features of the nebula have been uh, basically sharpened. So this is the before, so I'm just gonna clone that and then I'm going to go to the after. And you can see that things have been sharpened up a little bit and it is you know, quite visible. So um, I really you know, like that. Um, so it is very well sharpened. It's a very subtle effect. It doesn't seem to add a lot of noise and you can see there's definitely, this is before, this is a bit like more smooth and this is a bit sharpened and this is really really nice it's a nice way of doing so and i love what this 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 did to my image so let's run the next script in the series and we're going to do the denoise and the rista mask and that comes from john, john rista who has an excellent article about this uh, linear stage noise, noise reduction um, which is available down there and we have funny messages by dark in the logs as well. I love that. Uh, anyway, um, we are going to create uh, a TGV mask and I'll want to apply uh, TGV denoise and multi-scale multi, multi, me, multi median transform. Now, now what I have noticed is that for this image in particular, you still need to do some uh, back and forth. And I have noticed that I'll want to put my like edge protection in TGV to 0.5, my strength to roughly uh, one. And in my MMT settings, if I put strength here to 0.4, I would get good results. So your mileage may vary. You can see there's still some experimentation to do. And especially since this denoising can take a bit of time, especially on a slow computer, it can be a bit frustrating uh, to find the right parameters. Uh, but here we are. I know that these parameters work for me. And again, it will do a lot of things that 
I would normally do manually, creating masks, applying processes, uh, applying contrast changes, that kind of stuff, all sorts of stuff that I don't like doing. So where, again, we can create the masks only, we can create the masks and the denoise processes, or we can create the masks and run the denoise, which is what I'm gonna do because I'm, I'm after the most automated things that I pro possibly can get. And we're gonna wait until this processing is done and then uh, we'll keep going. And we're done! Awesome! So, uh, let's look at that image. So it seems indeed that most of the uh, noise has been like just wiped out. So if you look at the original image, there's tons of noise, especially like in those darker areas there, that has been smoothed out quite a lot without losing too much detail. I love this process and it's so automated, I have nothing to do. Ah, this is so good! So it's a game changer. Honestly, it is a game changer to me. So what's next? I mean, oh, this is so cool. So we've done noise reduction at the linear stage. We've done the deconvolution previously to get better sharpening. And uh, the next point will be soft stretch, I think. So I'm gonna stretch this. And again, we're gonna select my uh, master H alpha. And I'm not gonna care about any parameters. I'm just gonna run the soft easy stretch. And it gives you a level of stretch that is not too aggressive, just the right amount of stretch so that you can then apply curves. So now I can go and actually manually go into my uh, curves transformation. So I could go in there and get a preview and we can, you know, ah, oh, this looks good. Oh man, this looks good. Awesome. So, and then we can even do something more instead of uh, curves. We can do the last step of that script, which is the star reduction. And we're gonna select our view, match master H alpha. And again, I'll want to create my star mask for uh, star reduction. Although I think that doing this will actually uh, create the star mask automatically. Let's see. Yes, it is creating the star mask. So it's, it's all automated. This is crazy. This is awesome. I'm loving this. So uh, now we're waiting for, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, Starnet++ to create the star mask again. Uh, I could have just reused the star mask that we generated earlier, but I'm just gonna let the process do uh, the work. And there it is. We're done. Uh, the reduction has been done via probably a morpholic, morphological transformation. I have no idea. I don't even care. But you can see how the, the stars are reduced and we don't get quite a starless image, but it looks, you know, much smoother uh, and less distracting. And this is with some curves applied. Isn't that amazing? So it's almost doing all of the processing. <laughs> I don't need to do anything. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna keep processing and, you know, spoiler alert, I actually did it yesterday, but I'm gonna do exactly the same for S2, so Suffol 2 and Oxygen 3 images that I have. Then I'll do the narrowband combination and gonna, I'm gonna put the final image uh, in here. So uh, you'll be able to see it at the end of the video. So this is awesome. I love this. I hope this can be useful for you. If you use PixInsight, you really, really, really want to check that out. Um, so, you know, it's awesome. So, if it was useful, if you like what you see, if you like this kind of video, I do all sorts of videos from PixInsight related stuff to uh, general processing, to reviews of this, to Topaz Denoise, to technical stuff, to Nina tutorials, to all sorts of stuff. So if you like this, please don't hesitate to go down below, click on the subscribe button, click on the little notification bell that's next to it. Please also feel free to leave a like on the video. If you did not like the video, you can click on dislike, that's fine too. And uh, go in the comments down below if you have any comment, suggestion, or you know, um, feedback on my videos. So again, thank you so much for watching. As usual, whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.